radio station using our voice to rake your choice. Stay tuned. 90.8 Hills FM, in partnership with Tax Force for Music and Arts, presents Top Man Thursday. Stay tuned to listen to local artists every Thursday from 6 pm to 7 pm on 90.8 Hills FM. Pesh Kuri Ase, the Nagaland Disaster Management School Safety Policy Compliance Course of a Shab Course of Government, Aro Private Sansta Educators Kani. Itu Pahal Naga Ed Para Santalin Kuri Ase. To training platform day, Hikipuli Paribo Crucial Skills in Disaster Management, Course Sapalta Hua Pichite Apni Department of School Education, Aro NSDMA Para Official Certification, Babo. Itu Romanjak Pahal Day Park Lobo Karne. Department of School Education website education.nagaland.gov.in de jainar register button de click kuri bi je course of teachers aro educators kane compulsory ase government aro private schools de top sat tv nagaland disaster management school safety policy compliance course de a g enroll kuri bi hello my dear listeners we at hills fm in collaboration with task force for music and arts nagaland present to you tough mat thursday which is dedicated to promoting local artists to give them a platform to display their talents our goal at hills fm is to support our local artists from every form of art both upcoming and established and use our broadcast to let every listener know about our artists so keeping in line with our goal of supporting local artists stay tuned in and enjoy these songs
Hello listeners and back to 90.8 Hills FM. This is your RJ Gugu Haralu and today we have an amazing band who have made themselves present and also making a mark for themselves and this is none other than since 90s. So ladies and gentlemen, we have them here. So, hi. Hello. 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 So you've got all the five hellos for the <laughs> listeners. So, um since 90s, it's a very interesting uh name first of all, yeah. and I've been very curious to ask you and you guys can decide what is the inspiration or the idea between I mean, why since 90s? I mean, that's basically a very simple idea which Teja and I came up with. We were like thinking about the name of a band and then I came up with some metal band names but it didn't stick with <laughs> us so we just decided to go with something that's relatable to us so uh we were talking and then we noticed that we were all born from the 90s generation yeah. and then we I were like so. yeah we'll do something yeah. about that i think that sounds cool so we went with that so since 90s was the name of our band and then nice so Can you please introduce yourself? Who are the five members of Since 90s? Yeah, I'll start with me. I am Apicha. I am the vocalist of the band. And then I'm Imli and I'm the drummer. My name is Mern and I am the bassist for the band. I am Nangsang and I'm the guitarist. I am Teja and I'm also the guitarist. Thank you guys. Well, I also hear that you are inspired by some of the bands that you follow as an individual artist and as a collective band mm-hmm. so perhaps you can share maybe imli you know and apacha what inspires your band and what inspires you as an individual to do the kind of music that you're doing mm. i think <laughs> uh yeah Well, I listen to the band Pillar. Uh, I think they are Christian band, and yeah, inspires me. Say, mm, what's the name of the band? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think this is what friends are for. Yeah, now you remember. Somebody had to help you out. This is the time when I get confused. Okay. Do you guys have Yeah, I think Yeah, th- any one of you can share what inspires you if a picture Yeah, for me I grew up listening to old songs like The Beatles, Led Zeppelin and what not. And then I'm very fortunate that, that I grew up in a family that appreciates music. So when I was in class 10 or 11, Michael Jackson died and then you know, that era of Michael Jackson's death, you know, it, it inspired me. And I think like if musicians like if we go musically we can appreciate what Michael Jackson has done he writes his own music he makes his own music so in that sense like for me that when i write music i go back and listen to how they do it like mm. the parts and like how 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 a verse or how how a melody can change the 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 perception of a song like sure. and that And then I was in college. I listened, started listening to a band called Switchfoot. Me and my brother, we were stick, we were stuck with that band for a long time. And crazy then fans. crazy fans. <laughs> and then, you know, I was surrounded with music. And then grow, growing up as well, I listened to Flipside, Linkin Park, all those. And does this go similar with your other? Yeah, di- I think some of my friends Te- are. Teja Te- listens to K-pop. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> being unique is always nice, Teja. Yes. I wish uh, that K-pop influence is not does not come in our band. 
I think that's something in his own personal space. We <laughs> must respect <laughs> that, right, Tejo? Um, so it's interesting to know that you are influenced by popular rock bands, you know, like how you've also said about um, uh, the Switchfoot, the Foo Fighters. Yeah. It yeah, was also Fighters, one of my favorites yeah. during our school days, uh, Papa Rouge, you yeah, know, and Rouge. that is still the favorite. Mm -hmm. So as the 90s kids, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think uh, your batchmates still listen to this and... Do you still it's relevant in the music industry? Because it has really influenced you mm -hmm. uh, to in the way you think, in the way you perform, yeah. Yeah. and it has inspired you to continue that art. And when you are inspired by a particular musician uh, or an artist, uh, you seem to also live that lifestyle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So has it made an impact in the way you live your life? Musically, yes, I think, but uh, I would say that musically, yes. Yes, yeah. musically. Yeah. So what has been the greatest challenge when, like, I w we would like to know, I'm sure the listeners would like to know, the creative process that takes in making a piece. Mm -hmm. How does it happen? You mean our song? Yes. Yeah. So when we make a song, mm -hmm. first... Uh, Sometimes, like Teja would come up with a riff or something like that. So, both of us will jam. And after all those, okay, we'll do this, do that, do this, do that. And we'll send it to Apecha and to the rest of the members. And they will do their parts. And we'll come to the jam room. We're going to jam together and try to come up with something. Yep. Yeah. It's like that. So it's it's like a, a different production house, huh? <laughs> like two people get together and then they pass it on to the other yeah, member. Yeah. And so there are various processes. Yes, and yes. then you come together mm -hmm. and make it into yeah. one. So how do you coordinate that, you know, energy together? How do you tune in to come to that common place that, you know, is there a disagreement? Yeah, like I'll share that. I mean, beyond the music, there is our friendship. Like we were friends before the music, and I think that we like agree to disagree on a lot of things, which is uh, according like which is related to our music. But at the end of the day, we all come together. We all know each other. We know what type of music we want to create and make. And then when we are together, I think it just falls into place. Yeah. Like we just say that we don't keep things within ourselves we just say what we like what we don't like and we just say when it sounds yeah. bad it sounds bad we just say it wow. <laughs> and then i mean that's attributed to our friendship i think yeah. we're so lucky that we are friends before the music yeah. and that's why we're still doing it so that actually speaks a lot of the foundation your friendship is built on and that has helped in your professional uh, career that you wish to also pursue yeah. uh, through your passion for music it's also good to know, uh, and I'm sure the listeners and upcoming musicians can take a lot from these experiences. Yeah. So I would like to also ask you, um, who's your um, ideal musician that you wish to collaborate in days to come and why? Come on, Teja. Yes, Teja, it's time for you to speak. For me personally, uh it's from my personal side. <laughs> so <Yes>. I, I <laughs> and I've been thinking about this a lot. Like I, since we play a little heavy, so I was thinking Big Dane. Mm. <laughs> I wanted, <laughs> yeah, and also Imliakam also. Okay. So yeah. Does Imliakam knows this feeling of yours? I don't think he knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, now he knows. <laughs> what about the others? Uh, where, where would you like to collaborate? I think we would be happy if you could speak as an individual artist and also as a band. Yeah. That also gives, you know, the, the um, collectiveness of where we are mm -hmm. as a person. Because that influences our band also. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have different opinions and yeah. that's the beauty of coming together. Mm -hmm. So you can speak as an individual, as yeah. an individual artist yeah. and as a band also. 
I would love to collab with Ambush also. Ambush, yeah. It's an Dipu awesome band. Oh, yeah. okay. Have you cool worked with them before, or no, you've just no, no. heard just about? Heard them. Oh, yeah. so as a band or as an individual? As a band, mm. yeah. So you seem to complement each other. Yep. In, in the style that you... Yeah, yeah. the genre yeah. of our music, oh, it complements nice. each other. Yeah. Okay, and do they know your feeling? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> 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 I think we have spoken once or twice. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, when I hear that you have a thought across, you know, with another band, it also speaks about how we also influence each other. Yes. And what kind of message also is... You know, we are helping people to understand that music can actually cross many borders mm -hmm. and it can help people build relationship. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? For me, <coughs> as an individual, I would like to collaborate with the band UDX. Mm. Mm. Okay. They've been there from before and then yes. they've been very instrumental towards many upcoming bands. So yeah, I would like to collaborate with them. <laughs> well, UDX, I hope you hear that. <laughs> so yeah, as an artist for me, <laughs> <coughs> as an artist, I'd like to collaborate with Chickenhead. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? Yeah. The basis. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. And as a band, um, yeah, UDX. Nice. Well, glad to know. Apucha, you didn't share. Yeah, I think I share the same sentiment <laughs> with them. Like yeah? Playing with rock bands is much better than playing with some pop. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, you're going to disappoint a lot of broken hearts on the line, yeah? Just kidding. Well, I think um, it's good to know because it also gives a lot of positive vibe yeah. when we want to collaborate with our own contemporaries and people that we look up to mm -hmm. and how rightly uh, put it out by also acknowledging and appreciating bands who have inspired and influenced so many mm -hmm. young bands who have come up and I think that's where the examples is we need to inspire and influence so I also wish to ask um, the competitions that you have participated oh. how yeah. did it feel did you I mean, did you feel unsure of yourself? Is it the right time? It is not the right time. What went through you when you actually decided to get into a competition? And which was the first competition? Uh, N6. Okay. It was in yeah. Koima, 2017. So, <laughs> we are a worship team. Like, actually, we started out <laughs> as a worship team. And then one day we were like, you know what? We will start a rock, rock band. And then this guy Imli he brought a song he wrote a song and he told us you know how this sounds and we were like that sounds good I think we will go for a band competition and then we just decided to go for recording for a demo that's the time and when we <laughs> uh, gave our band a demo so yeah yeah <laughs> we were kidding I, I came up with some pretty metal band names but we s <laughs> we decided to go with since 90s and then yeah on December we played a contest and we uh, we won so that was a good feeling, I think. So finally, it was a good surprise for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And when you said you were a worship team, what do you mean by that? You were like all... Yeah, yeah, we were on we were on the same worship team. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. still still now we're still worship. Thumb of this church. Thumb of this church. <laughs> well, I'm sure the church is proud of you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think a lot of our musicians have got their roots on yeah, yes, the church, worship. On the church. Yeah. You know, the worship team. Yeah. And we must be grateful and thankful for that because the grooming, the nurturing started mm -hmm. from our church. And uh, that's the biggest asset that our state has. Yes. Yeah. But trust me, not everybody can sing or play instrument. Yeah. And I'm one of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everywhere I go, people would say, hey, we've heard Nagas are great singers and musicians. I'm like, mm-hmm, not me. <laughs> and they would ask me to sing a song and I sing Baba Black Ship or Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> Uh, so that's the other section who would resonate with me. Mm -hmm. But uh, Imli, before you leave, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listeners, Imli is in a hurry right now. <laughs> so more questions to you completely in one minute. What is it that you wish to tell our audience about uh, being a mu as a musician mm -hmm. and about the music industry in Nagaland? 
it's a, big it's a very question. hot topic right now in the mm. state and it's important to know how you feel mm. I think honest got you off guard yeah. honest opinions <laughs> yes <laughs> Anything that will help us do better, your mm -hmm. observation as a musician, because we all have our own opinion. But yeah. any opinion that is going to build a community, and we as a community radio, we want to have genuine feedbacks. Hard truths are some things that we have to, but if done with love and compassion, yeah. anything can build a broken bridge also. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's where we are coming from. Any incident that you have observed that you feel that, aha, that's where I would like to say something. I feel like there should be more festivals okay. and shows. Okay. Yeah. And. Okay. Now I'm out of ideas. <laughs> you don't want to go into deep waters, <laughs> <laughs> saying stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that there has been. Um, uh, a heavy burden on our people when it comes to festivals yeah, yeah. because of the number of uh, not just the number but the amount of investment mm -hmm. and there are more important priorities to invest those monies yeah. right so how do we balance this you as a musician and recently we had a hiccup with a certain incident yeah. where uh, musicians were brought in you know uh, for uh, an event yeah. where many people felt that it was not necessary. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm sure you're aware of such um, reactions and responses from mm. people. And it's a mixed feeling. There are many a times that we don't know why authorities sometimes take decisions yeah, like yeah. that. Mm. But I think as somebody, I mean, I have also my own opinion over that. Mm. But it's important as a musician to... Uh, take part and be relevant and also stay connected with the things that is moving around. Yeah. We cannot <laughs> live in isolation, yes. right? We can't be like, <coughs> oh, as long as Mukhan ke effect na kole and our things are going on right yeah. track, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter to yeah. us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this indifferent attitude is also creating a lot of differences in the industry, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is we're also getting to experience and also hear, and a lot of people don't want to come out about this, mm -hmm. okay, that they're also being um exploited yeah. in the name of uh you know um promoting them nurturing them mm. but they're also not taught on the professional aspect mm. of how they should speak for themselves mm -hmm. and there are a lot of vulnerable uh, want to be musicians also who are trapped in such yeah. kind of uh, engagements and we are no different from the industry that yeah. It can be music industry, it can be uh, modeling industry, yeah. it can be film industry. All kinds of exploitation is prevalent. Mm. So as a musician, I think this is very important. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. But I'm glad that you spoke about the festivals. Yeah. Because honestly, that's a huge burden in our state. Mm -hmm. As much as the state wishes to promote Emily, mm -hmm. there's also a negative side of it. So how yeah. do we balance just in a line or two that you feel. <laughs> well, I don't have answer for that now. <laughs> it's fine. I'm sure your other band members would like to share in a very different style. Mm -hmm. But I think it's about time we ponder on this. Yeah. Because if questions like this, and when we say we don't have an answer, it is also a beginning to make us start thinking. Yeah. So there's there's not there's i mean no correct answers mm -hmm. but it's a time we start pondering ah i didn't think of it but why is this question being raised right now mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> so in this kind of conversations and many a times i actually catch a lot of people off guard mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. my conversations are not script mm -hmm. and um, a deeper conversation also creates genuine relationship and get the heartbeat of the people yeah. and as a community mm. radio um we cannot be parroting mm -hmm. you know and pleasing everybody mm. but hard facts but also with the intention to finding solutions together and uh your band being a very young band yeah. you know starting with something 
I mean, very oblivious to it. Like, na baba na kuri gine. You just took the plunge. You took the risk, and today you are a real band. You know, a formed band, and it takes a lot. It didn't come without sacrificing yeah. something, and with the '90s kids, um, it's something in between. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we are poses fire kids. Yeah, we did not see the struggles of what our elders and our parents had to go through, mm-hmm. and hence our passion <coughs> for music or what we are passionate about becomes a medium to express about our lives. So, Emily, we are going to spare you today, <laughs> and we're going to pass that buck to your other members. So, thank you very much for coming yeah. in. And we hope to seeing you soon again. Yes. Yeah. So with Imli leaving us all by ourselves, yeah. let's listen from the other band members. We have Teja, Nung Sang. We have who else? We have Apecha and Meren. So, can you tell us? And I'm sure the listeners would like to also ask. I wish this was on live so that actually people can actually yeah. ask questions. But um. What is it that, in your own process of becoming a musician for this band as a full time, mm-hmm. is it a full time or is it a part time? And uh, what is it that you do apart from being a musician? Mm-hmm. So anyone can start. Yeah, I I don't know if we can say anybody can be a full time musician here in Nagaland. Really? <laughs> yeah, without setbacks. Um, there sh- we always we should always have a backup plan, and then music is something that we enjoy, and we do take it seriously. But at the same time, we have to take care of ourselves so that if does if this does not work out, we have something to fall onto. So, like we have our own works, we do our own works, different works besides the music, and I don't know. Maybe this, maybe uh, like this music thing is a serious thing, but at the same time, we also want to do certain things of our own as well. So, so what do you do, Apecha? So yeah, I actually I was working for a company called T Tech, and then you know working with outside people, <laughs> it's quite difficult to adjust. So I was like, you know, this is not for me. So uh, I always wanted to teach, and then. Hopefully, I get to teach in a college or some somewhere in the near future. And I don't know, but the other guys, if you want to share anything. Yes, Teja, Marin, and so. Yeah, like Apacha said, uh, we take our music seriously, but we do need to have a backup plan. Yeah. So we can solely depend on music here in our state, or yeah. So my backup plan is I <laughs> <laughs> I do a job. I work uh, as a data entry operator for food and civil supplies here in Dimapur. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> How about you too, Tajan? So. Uh, right now, I'm just playing music with these guys. Mm-hmm. Then, in the middle, in the midst of it, m- I'm also preparing for civil services exams. You know. That's it. So we have a civil service aspirant here. <laughs> nice. A, a very serious one yeah. too. <laughs> and a very serious one too. Yes, <laughs> yes. Back to Teja. Okay. For me, um, I teach music. Mm-hmm. And also, besides since 90s, I also play for other bands. Yeah. So, yeah. So you must be v- having a more vibrant life, huh? Apart from the others, I mean, <laughs> Imli and you, I mean, as far as I've been told, that both of you actually play with different bands. So we, how do you professionally call yourself as a freelancer, musician, or what is the right word for that? Yes, yes, you yeah? can say that, yes. And what excites you when you work with different bands? Uh, to play uh, different genres. <coughs> yeah. Wow. That excites me because uh, I have to be on my toes. Like, mm. you know, I can't be on my comfort zone. So I have to practice a lot. <laughs> and how did you get into this business, you know, of allowing yourself to be available for other bands? I mean, it didn't happen overnight, Right. Yes, yes, yes. And has there been someone mentoring you, or mm. it's something that you learned and taught yourself? Mm. 
well when we guys were performing i think they saw me play and they thought i i could do it and when they didn't have guitarists and all uh, they contacted me so it started from there okay yeah and this is like for how long has it been now that you're in involved with many artists Two years. Two yes, years. Two years. Yes. Wow. So you are a total full time, right? Unlike your other friends. <laughs> yeah, he's full time <laughs> in music. Oh, so is Imli, right? Yeah, Imli. Yes, also, yeah. I think so. Both of you are full timers. Yeah, even Imli, he plays Imli, for. Yeah, I mean, like the way he rushed off, yeah, yeah in yeah. the <laughs> middle of the interview. But it's so good to know that each one of you, of course, are very serious, and I've already thought through that you cannot survive alone. Yeah. Yes, so this brings me to ask you, and any one of you can respond to that. What is the music industry like in Naglen? What have you tasted, and where do you feel that ah, I wish, mm. and what is that I wish? It can be a personal observation, or something that as a band you have experienced, and you wish that there was some kind of. Change or approach that could help the ecosystem for the musician to be healthier. For me, I feel like there are a lot of complaints coming from musicians. Yeah. Like that's my personal. From musicians or for musicians? From musicians. Okay. Okay. So I always think of it on these terms, like. If you're a musician and if you produce good good music, if you create if you create good music, no matter where you are, people are gonna respond to that. No, if you create if your product is good, people are gonna listen. So yeah, I guess instead of complaining, yeah. why not practice yeah. Mm. Yeah. discipline yourself and not only practice but you know try to compose create good songs instead of you know blaming this and that pointing your fingers at the government and all how interesting yeah does any of yeah. your other friends have a different opinion on this yeah i resonate the same with teja <coughs> like we are into the business of like complaining instead of working for ourselves I think that when you create good content, when you make good music, when you play good shows, people are going to call you. It's not about you receiving platform for who you are, but you should work on that. You shouldn't be expecting people to call you just because of who you are. You should show them that why should they should call you in the first place. So I think yeah, what they just said is it resonates with me as well. Like we shouldn't expect people to hand us and give us a free handout. We should be working on ourselves. We should expect people to call us because of who we are, with what, uh, because of what, what type of music we play and how we play it in live shows as well. So, are you saying that when you started off, when yeah. you started off, what kind of support did you receive, and has it satisfied you in terms of receiving that support? Now you're talking about be on your own, do your best, create your own music, be original, yeah. be authentic, and eventually people will recognize you in due course of time. Yeah. So as you were journeying out together, what kind of support did you receive and um, did it overwhelm you with the situation where sometimes you maybe may felt alone in this journey? I mean, I'll be very honest, like when we were like really working hard for this band, people actually were calling us to, for us to play shows. And then, I mean, it all depends on that, like how much hard work you put into the music that you create. And we don't complain much, like we, we do what we do. When, we, when people call us, we practice as much as we can and we play the best show in our lives. And then that makes sure that make sure that people remember us and they call us the next time i mean i mean that's the main reason why we do music like if we keep on complaining about this and that i think it it disturbs the music that you create wow. and then like when you are honest with your music i think people will, will resonate with that as well you don't have to go like knocking on doors like hey listen to our music but when you're doing something really good people will resonate to that so yeah 
Thanks, Apacha. I think that's a very strong message out there, listeners, and also the intending uh, musicians, you know. Yeah, Teja, please. I think that for us, since 90s, we started from scratch because first we were all together in a worship team and even our first contest and sex, we participated because we did we needed money mm. to upgrade our gears okay so from and sex till now like we we haven't been competing for some time now but <coughs> from all the like monies we earn from from winning we all bought gears with that money yeah. wow. so yeah no support from here and there like we we yeah. we worked hard we worked really hard to get your own band yeah. yes 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 it's wow. better to believe in your own abilities than to depend on other people for support yes. oh, so maybe because yeah. of that we don't complain yeah, <laughs> i don't, don't know <laughs> <laughs> And hoping you would complain. <laughs> yeah. But I think some complaints are genuine. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I think we cannot just yes. brush it off True and problem. say that, um, just do your own thing, you know. Yeah. Um, because it's a very critical um, business, mm-hmm. I mean, the industry. And uh, many a times, the relevancy of your existence depends on the audience. Yes. Yeah? Mm-hmm. They can strike you off or make you even continue. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the interesting, but also the risky business of being part of an industry. Mm-hmm. The trolling, the sarcasm, um, all kinds of taglines. So can you tell us, so I'm moving a little bit on some kind of uh, a funny incident that you can perhaps remember doing your performances. Um, how do you open up um, a situation where, you know, some audiences may not be acquainted with your style. Uh, they're bored, they're tired. How do you, you know, uh, build that energy as you go on stage to wake up people? What do you do with a boring, tiring audience? How would you do your opening? For me, I always tell the band that <laughs> <laughs> if you give energy, mm-hmm. people will give energy back to you. So. Whenever I perform, uh, I give whatever I have, like whatever energy that I have. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. What about the others? Any experiences that you've had you've, you, where you were really challenged, you know, having the audience to concentrate on you? Mm, like the type of music we play, I think it's hard for people to be sleepy because it's <laughs> quite loud. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, Pacha. That's yeah. very true. Uh, I think even the uh, the dead would wake up, yeah, with yeah. the kind of uh, genre you play. So I also see that you've been part of the Rockville 2019. Is that how you pronounce Rockville or Rockville? Rockville. Rockville. Yeah. Yes. So what is this? Yeah. Icarating. Icarating. Oh yeah, that's uh, Ben Contest for NIT. Chumu. Chumu, right? Yeah. How was the experience there? Yeah, it was. I think that was the first contest we did after Hornbill, right? Or was it? No, no. Yeah, we played Guati. Oh, yeah, we played in Guati as well. So I see that the kind of achievements that you all have collectively achieved, and all these competitions that yeah. you have been part of, what is it? What is the takeaway that you have experienced? Because every competition is different. Mm. The spirit is different. The energy is different. The vibe is different. You know, the the feeling that goes inside you is different. And and what can you tell us about these competitions? And why do you think competitions are important? Um, for musicians, like for bands, I think competitions are really important, especially for like Northeast and all. I think people get to know bands because of contests like rock contests or whatever um <coughs> and yeah rock contests and also to earn and invest on gears <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's also important so okay so going back yes competitions it's an opportunity to also For, earn yeah. to build your band yes. but how do you get to also decide um to sustain yourselves because 
um, before you started the band, you had to acquire some instruments, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then when the com- money came in from your winning, that somehow enhanced. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So at the initial stage, how did you get these instruments for you to play with? I mean, before the band, we were with a team and they were all, we were all playing our own, instru- our own instruments. So like we had our instruments like already. Your own personal yeah, we instruments? Were, yeah. And then when we got to win some contests, we get to improve for those instruments, those equipments that we needed. And how do you guys get to uh, take a share of your pocket money out of that? Is there a fight over it? No, no, no. We, we're no, just like... like we, we distribute it equally. Yeah, we're wow. a very so democratic with band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with that, with that amount, like you're in charge of it. So yeah. do whatever you want One with that. Yeah. And who is the grandfather in your group? I mean, basically, who gets to have a last say? Or everybody gets into... Uh, is it you, Teja? Yeah, <laughs> His little smirky smile and, you know, looking down was an indicator that he may be perhaps the one who gets to. So, I mean, are we looking at that? Who is the most experienced person? Is it you and Imli or all of you are in the same? Yeah, I think I should, I will say Imli and Teja are the most experienced here, musically. Nice. Like in the other areas, like it's debatable, but <laughs> for music, we'll say it's similar. And it. also regarding, uh, not only contests and all, regarding pro- like for us as a band, we are here right now. Like we reached this level because of all the past experiences. Because yeah. the first time we played, mm. and now. The way we play is very, very different. different yeah. Okay. B- because we learn from our mistakes. So every every time we perform, we learn from <laughs> what we did wrong back then. Nah? So who so gets to point that out? Everyone. Whoa, everyone. everyone? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It affects us individually, I guess. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because we know that we messed up and we work on it. Especially for me, I don't know about the other guys. It affects me. Yeah, personally. even Abicha told me that once when he sang. A song flat. Yeah, yeah. He, he said he couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, and then like <laughs> the most important thing take away from those experiences is that you cannot allow yourself for those moments to consume you. Okay. Like if you if you feel that you need areas to improve, you work on it. Like you really work on it, and you and you show people that what you know you could be you you are doing so much better than you were yesterday. So that's the mindset mindset I have. You know. I work on things that I couldn't do like two, three years back that I I can actually do now. I mean, growth, I think that that is the most important takeaway from criticism. So whatever mess, things you messed up on stage is growth. How good are you guys in taking criticism? Because this is something in our Naga society, <gasps> correction is like a no-no, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, you say it from your heart, even as a friend, oh my, they take it so deep that forget about even talking back to you yeah. so like Apecha has shared and all of you and I think that's a very positive sign because it has an impact in you yeah. and if you're able to correct your own mistakes nothing like it yeah. and even if somebody yeah. tells us it's okay because sometimes we don't see ourselves yeah. yeah and sometimes our ego and pride also blocks that possibility of doing things better um, so how about you do? you know, how do you see um, any particular situation where you have had a different uh, change and impact in your performances? Uh, as for me, like during the initial stage when we first formed the band, most people were like, uh, that guitar is too much or the drums are too much vocal is not up to the par yeah. and then they'll say what not but then yeah to be honest i felt really offended during the initial stage but then as y- years went by i think i took it as a constructive criticism and yeah it's a very positive thing to do i mean different people have different opinions so i think it's not a waste to get to know from them also their opinions their perspective yeah, that's nice. <laughs> well, 
I mean, I mean, I think uh, criticisms. I think they're gonna be. It's gonna be there, and then people are criticizing or being critical because they're seeing something. Yeah. You, you know, they can't just criticize people. But for me, I uh, criticism. I take it very. I mean, as a yeah, like Marin said, constructive criticisms, and then. We get to you know learn something from the criticism as well, and then we improve on whatever it is. And <coughs> yeah, that's it. That's right nice now, to uh, know. Yeah, right now I'm enjoying. Yeah. I I love playing. I love playing live shows with this band right, right now. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think the best response to criticism is. To do better next time, mm. growth. Yeah. That's important. That's nice because what you guys have shared sums up to take it positively, yeah. and not take it personally. Yeah. And even if it's a personal critique, yeah. there must be a reason why. And if it's yes. not true, fine with it. Yeah. I think uh, the discretion of identifying mm. what is true and what is not true also speaks about how much we are connected with ourselves. Mm. And like I said, our ego and pride is always on our nose, mm. and uh, this also blocks the possibility for people to help you, mm. right? So mm, somewhere I would like to also ask you that um, what has been the funniest uh, incident as a band when you have been traveling and meeting people? You know what excites you, or anything that you know we said ah that incident we can never forget about it. For me, falling on stage. <laughs> okay, for me. I resonate that with you. I've yeah. fallen so many times. How did you fall? I was. Uh, we were playing a song. Carpet. I was into the movement. <laughs> the carpet said, "I'm gonna take you down," and I fell down. <laughs> and I got up. I mean, within 0.2 seconds, I guess. I mean, yeah. And we continued on with the song. I hope. I mean, hopefully, like. I didn't disturb the piece of the song, but yeah. And like memories like that, it sticks with you. Like when you're like feeling really hyped up and you, when you feel like you have reached that place, like when you think about those moments, you are humbled and you remain grounded. I think it's very important that those moments occurs in our lives. Those those moments that when you are really like, when your ego is on a full on booster mode, you get to humble yourself. Like where you started, where were you? Like, and I think that's important. Yeah, that's. And on the same very same show where you yeah, fell, they remember everything. <laughs> yeah. The sh- same show, Imli's drumstick flew off. <laughs> yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Drumming, yeah. Oh god. He was what drumming happened? hard, and then uh-huh. he, I think he hit the, what do you say, the stand. And then his drumstick flew off, and he was looking at me like this. Oh, what to do? <laughs> 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 on that very same show where Apicha <laughs> fell. <down. laughs> Jinx, huh? Yeah. yeah. I think. What Apicha uh, shared, I really like to um, repeat that because I also had an incident where it was like a huge event and I tripped. And I tripped because I was pushed because the guest was coming. And I was in a very different mood in terms of having a deep conversation and uh, I was supposed to be the person hosting it. And suddenly... Um, the lady in charge, she tells me, Gugu, you got to go on stage, you know? And I turn and then I fall. And the whole world is <laughs> looking at me. And I'm like, you know, that few, whatever, 0.05 yeah. seconds, the whole change of your expression, like nothing happened. But you were, of course, telecasted of falling down, you know? But this is called being professional also that you carry on the work in spite of the situation and i think it takes a lot from us of course you go through embarrassing feeling oh my god i just look like a fool out there but at the same time you got to do the show you're holding that space and you go doing it and it's a humbling experience because it also makes you laugh that that fall yeah you were not the only one (laughs) i'll share that when i fell and when i turned back all of my friends were laughing (laughs) hey i'm I'm like wow (laughs) thank you for the support (laughs) 
<laughs> well, there's a saying, right? Don't laugh when someone trips because you're the one next. Yeah. yeah. I'm waiting on that for three years now. <laughs> I don't think it's happening. <laughs> you know, Apacha, um, I was looking at your video. And it's so interesting. Honestly, for me, I've never imagined Apacha. You know, he's a different person on stage. And that's the beauty of it. Uh, here we see him like the subtle little shy <laughs> boy, you know, softy. But as a vocalist, I did not see that persona. And I'm so uh, proud of you and proud of the friends that you have who have actually sticked on. Yeah. And I think this is the beauty of your foundation mm. as a band and the 90s kids, you yeah. know, and is setting such a beautiful example to our other youngsters that it is possible if you have the heart for yes. it and this doesn't come without a sacrifice and i guess you guys are mentoring people in so many ways through your music and also the way you conduct yes. yourself because you can't be something when you are being a musician and something else in a church pulpit yeah. and something yeah. else outside i think this is one of the struggle that our youngsters are having having multiple personalities mm -hmm. where you are unsure who you are and that's why many of our youngsters are lost. Mm. So coming back to being a young example to our youngsters, um, I was hoping to find out that uh, what is it that you feel that are the qualities that is needed to becoming a better musician? Because we're all in the improvement cycle, mm. right? We are not static. And as you have all shared that through your experiences, you have been able to improve so much so as a musician um what could be the advice that you can give that this makes a quality musician for me i would advise those about i mean upcoming musicians or any musicians or someone who is uh, like thinking of pursuing music just try to be hardworking, efficient and then be persistent so I think, yeah, these are the qualities for like an individual to become a better musician because some might have talent and all, but then eventually hard work will overcome and beat talent, of course. Wow, <laughs> so true. Yeah, mm. for me, that's it. The other members, please. Mm, try to perform on stage because mm. practicing at home and performing on stage is very different night and day so yeah for me practice also like practice a lot but then try to you know play on stage as much as possible when people call you say yes go when you get the opportunity go and when and if you are not into any bands or this and that uh, try to find it because <laughs> people won't all the time people will, won't come to call you right so oh. yeah so is find that it yourself also sometimes yeah i know I of some friends who did that okay like and that's how they started yeah off. yeah 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 beautiful Pacha? no uh, i think i'll just take it um for me as a musician like if you want to grow be honest honesty it's really important don't fake don't pretend to be someone who you are not be honest with the music you create and then people will connect with you automatically music is something that people connects when i write music i do not write in the perspective of others i am a very selfish writer i always say that i write it on my own perspective but the beauty of music is that people connect with you because we are all connected somewhere i don't know how human beings are connected but we all go through things that are similar and yeah honesty is very important don't try to be a fake be yourself and people will connect with you automatically thanks guys so this is my last question all right what is that one skill that has empowered you to be a better musician that has kept you grounded for me i think i speak for my friends as well our faith that's really important no matter where you are no matter how far you think you have come 
always stay grounded in your faith know that other people there will be always be other people who will do better much better than you but know that even in those times know that whatever you are doing in life wherever you are you are doing something for a purpose not for yourself i always say that live for others do do like do something for others like even if you do not get a response or receive something back do it in the goodness of your heart and i think our faith keeps us grounded we started from the church we are still on the church and will remain to be on the church yeah wow and it is here on this note another last word from you is there something coming up that we are to expect from the since 90s yeah we have got a lot of things planned hopefully we get to do it we have planned about releasing our music like we have got about four songs that we are releasing like one after another and then hopefully we get to make another music video and release it as well hopefully we get to do that yeah we're excited for that i know that i don't sound excited but <laughs> we are really excited for that <laughs> oh god i think we're equally excited now <laughs> So you know yourself very well, huh? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for yeah. coming in today to our 90.8 Hills FM. It's been a wonderful conversation with all of you, and we hope that after your new album is out, we get to talk yeah. about more. Listeners, um, uh, the Since 90s have actually agreed to actually have us uh, play one of their songs, uh, which actually was a breakthrough. Yeah. And we hope to play that after the ending of uh, our interview as a closure, but also an opening uh, that uh, they exist. Yeah. And uh, they are doing incredibly uh, an exemplary uh, work. And as uh, Apicha said on behalf of the team, that everything that we do has a purpose. Yeah. And when we serve with all our heart, and um, our faith being the foundation to keep us going in spite of the chaoses, the struggles, um, that still remains yeah. in us. And I think that's a wonderful uh, message from since 90s. And we hope that you enjoy listening to their songs and also be inspired with what they have been able to share with us. And you're able to know them as people, as individuals and as a band. Well. Say bye, everybody. Thank you for having us. Uh, <laughs> bye. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll wrap up from here, dear listeners, and I hope you've enjoyed. Do continue to stay tuned with 90.8 Hills FM. This is your RJ Gugu Haralu signing off.
90.8 Hills FM in partnership with Tax Force for Music and Arts presents Top Man Thursday. Stay tuned to listen to local artists every Thursday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on 90.8 Hills FM. Radio station using our voice to rake your choice. Stay tuned. <laughs> 